Hello, my name is Matt Musanti. I'm an artist in cohort 15 at the Guildhall at SMU. This is the first part in a series covering weapon setup in the Unreal Development Kit. This tutorial assumes the user has basic knowledge of Max, and namely how to model, texture, and a few other fun little tricks in Max. Essentially, this tutorial assumes that the viewer is an art student at the Guildhall and knows most of the material that I'll be covering. The first step that you'll want to have covered already is having created your weapon. So for instance you see here that I have my weapon all set up. Uh, it has been modeled, it has been textured, so all that needs to happen now is that I need to export it in a format that can be read by UDK. The first step in this process is to make sure that the units you're using in Max are set up to be the same units that UDK uses. This way you can ensure that whatever you're exporting is scaled properly to fit inside the engine. In order to do this, you go to Customize and Unit Setup. From there you want to make sure that you're using generic units and then go to System Unit Setup and click the button. UDK's unit scale is 0 0.065 feet to one unit. So you want to make sure that that's set up properly. And then click OK. To make sure that your model is scaled properly, you can use a standard primitive scaled to be the size of a generic character in UDK. Here I have a simple box that I made that has been scaled to be the proper height of a UDK character. This height is 96 units. As you can see, my weapon actually appears to be a little bit smaller than the standard weapon a character would use. While this is somewhat of a problem, this problem can be offset by setting the size of the weapon manually when you'll be scripting how the weapon works later on. In general, however, you want to make sure that your weapon is the proper size. The next step is making sure that your weapon is aligned properly on the grid. The next part of this process is making sure that your weapon is aligned properly on the grid. Consider the center of the grid the default location that any character in UDK will attempt to hold a weapon. As you can see, that location is not very conducive to the holding of this weapon, which has two different handles not currently near the world origin point or the center of the grid. This can, again, be offset when you are scripting the properties of your weapon such that you can offset that location to be the handle of your weapon. Additionally, one of my colleagues will be going over how to create attachment points that can also be used as locations for a character to hold a weapon in UDK. After your weapon has been aligned properly, you want to go ahead and reset the X form on it. Resetting the X form resets its transform coordinates as well as its scale and rotation all back to 0 or 100 essentially their defaults, so when you import the weapon, you won't get any strange offsetting behavior, such as a weapon that is offset, let's say, 10 units forward, instead of being where it's meant to be. After you reset the X-Form, you want to go ahead and 
construct a skeletal rig for your weapon. As you can see here, I've already created a bone structure for this weapon. When you are creating your bone structure, you want to make sure that you have a root node that extends from the handle. The root node can be used as an attachment point so that a character in UDK can hold your weapon from that point. As you can see here, I have bones extending off of this root node. One of these bones, in particular this bone right here, is meant to be another attachment point for the other hand of the character to hold this weapon, since this weapon has two handles. You want to make sure that the termination point on one of your bone chains exists at the location that you plan your weapon to fire from. In this case, my bone is located right in the middle of this saw blade, since that that's where additional saw blades will be spawning when this weapon fires. It's a good idea to make sure that you name your bones properly so that when we import all of this into UDK you have a good idea of what bones are meant to do what and they can be attached up easily without too much trouble. Once you've created the bone structure for your weapon you want to go ahead and apply a skin modifier to the mesh. The skin modifier allows you to connect the bone structure to your mesh and allows you to dictate which bones cause which parts of your mesh to move. As you can see, I have weighted this back half of my weapon to the root bone. The front portion of this weapon is weighted to another bone. This is so this front half can animate independently for the animations that I am planning to make for this weapon. You'll notice that due to the hierarchical structure of how bones work, even if skin weights are attached to bones lower in the bone structure, if the root bone is moved, the entire mesh will also move. Once your skin weights have been painted, you are ready to animate your weapon. As you can see here, I've already done a simple little weapon fire animation for my weapon. This was done by grabbing the root node and doing the animations based off of that. After your weapon has been skinned and animated, there's just one more step that you need to take in order to create a weapon that's ready for exporting. This last step is to create a dummy object that all pieces of your weapon that you would like to export then get parented to. As you can see here, I've already made this object. This, it, it's very important, you need to make sure that this object is named BIP01. This is just the default root node that UDK looks for when it attempts to parse new 3D objects. Once you have this dummy object set up, go to your schematic view. Once in your schematic view, all you need to do is hook up your bone structure as well as your weapon's mesh to the dummy object simply by using the connect feature. Once you've done that, you're ready to export your weapon. In order to export your weapon, you'll need the ActorX plugin. The ActorX plugin actually comes with UDK, which you can find inside your UDK folder in the binaries folder. When you're in this folder, 
simply look for the version appropriate to your 3D software. In my case, this is Max 2011 64-bit. Then all you need to do is copy the actorx.dlu into your plugin folder. For me, this is located in Program Files Autodesk 3D Studio Max 2011 plugins. At this point, simply restart your 3D program and you should be able to find it. In order to reach the ActorX plugin, you need to go to your Utilities tab and then click on the More button. It should be at the very top. From there, click OK, and then you'll be able to see all of the options that ActorX gives you for exporting your model. After you have Actor X up and running, you're ready to export your weapon. The first part of this is exporting the skeletal mesh information, which includes all of the geometry and bone information of your weapon. Your weapon absolutely needs to be skinned in order for it to be exported correctly by the skeletal mesh exporter. The first part is to pick an output folder. Fairly straightforward. The next part is to name your skeletal mesh. A good naming convention for this is your weapon underscore mesh. After you have all that filled out, click save mesh slash ref pose. This will go through the exporting process and write the PSK that UDK will be able to read in as a skeletal mesh. After you have your skeletal mesh exported, you need to export the animations attached to the weapon. First, you need to create a file name that all of these animations are going to be put in. Another good naming convention to use here is the name of your weapon, underscore, anim. This digest animation button will be pressing in a little bit, but first we need to include all of the information about the animation sequence that we're going to be putting in the file that we just named. This little weapon fire animation that I made earlier is a good example of what you need to do. First thing is to name the animation sequence. In this case, mine is named Weapon Fire. There are only a select few names that UDK understands as animation sequences to be attached to weapons. Weapon Fire is one of them. Capitalization is very important in these names. For a full list of all of the names that you can use for your weapon sequences, I strongly suggest you look at the animation sets attached to the weapons inside UDK. After you have your animation sequence named, you need to tell Actor X the range the animation extends from on your time slider. The animation I made extends from frames 0 to 11. So you just input that inside your animation range field. 0 hyphen 11. After you've completed that, you click the digest animation button. Digesting the animation writes that animation into a format that UDK can read. However, it's still not yet into the animation file that we named earlier. In order to put it there, we go to the animation manager. In the Animation Manager, you can see a list of all of the animations that you've digested thus far. In order to write them into the .psa that UDK can read animation information from, select the animation you wish to move, and just click on the Move button to move it into the output package. As you can see down here, this is the file that these animations are being written into which is the same file that we named earlier. In this way, you can digest multiple animations 
off of the same time slider and then stick them into the animation file. Thus you have an entire file full of animations that UDK can then read. This concludes the portion of this tutorial dealing with exporting your weapon from Max. From here, you can import the .psk and the .psa into UDK, which will be covered in the upcoming tutorials.